Welcome to Life and Next podcast. Thank you for having me. No worries. So, do you want to? Uh, so, Liz, do you want to describe your role? You know, what is it? What do you do at Next? Yeah. So, my role is in a team called Sustainability. Um, it's it's split sort of into corporate sustainability, which is thinking about our impact that we have with our buildings and our transport network in in the UK and around, um, and then. The other side of it is product, and I sit more on the product side. So I work heavily with the product teams um, on switching from conventional materials mainly into what we call better materials or preferred materials. So they're not perfect, but they're better than the conventional. Yeah. Um, and, yeah, that that's mainly my role, working with the product teams on that. And by product, you mean women's wear, kids wear, men's wear, home, all of those teams. Yeah. Well, yes, yeah. interesting. All of those traditional Next teams. But since we've become Next Group and we've got uh, TP partners, yeah. I also now work with Jules and Fatface and all of the TP partners to to work out where we're going to align on policy. Um, we, we're, we've aligned on targets mm. towards sustainability. So a lot of the the work I've been doing in the last year or so is working with the TP partners to, yeah, get us all on working towards the same goals. Not not too hard, Ben. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. It's, um, no, it is challenging. Is it like an educational process? Is that what it is more? Yeah. It, it really depends because some of the TP partners have already got their own teams and they're already very focused on this. Right. Like um, Fat Face, for example, a, a B Corp. So they're already doing a lot of the work. What's B Corp? Sorry. Um, so B Corp is a sustainability standard. But in fact, no, it's not just sustainability. It's a, it's about an ethos. It's about a way a, a business conducts itself. Um, so and they're a, they're a small business. They've been going for quite a while doing that. So there's there's a real mixture. And then for our teams, the, it's always moving. The thing with sustainability is we set some targets in 2018 to 2025. So yeah. they're they're coming up for renewal. And what were those targets? So Do they you remember? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. I live and oh, breathe yeah, yeah. this every day. Um, so that that was to switch our key textile raw materials plus timber from. Um, to 100% more sustainable materials by 2025. Right. So we're very close to achieving that for cotton and timber at the moment. Some of the other raw materials have been a bit more challenging. Oh, we're also going to achieve it for leather and feathers. Nice. Um, for polyester and wool, we're a bit further away. And then there's a thing called man-made cellulosics, which not everybody knows what that never means. Heard, never, ever heard of that in my life. So no. it's... You'll know exactly what it is. You know if you get um, a shirt that's all patterned, you yeah. know, these men's shirts and women's printed dresses are classically made from the viscose. Oh, so viscose. viscose and I've heard of viscose. Yeah. yeah. And it's made from trees. Oh. So it's made from the wood pulp from trees. So the reason um, we're involved in that yeah. is we need to make sure that we are not causing deforestation through those fibre choices. Yeah, absolutely. But equally, we're not also causing pollution because mm. it's quite a chemical and water-intensive process to imagine trying to get a tree from wood into that lovely soft fabric that yeah, you know. That's a long process and yeah. also could be harmful as well, yeah. Could be if yeah. done incorrectly. Yeah. So we've got, on all of those materials, we've got very strict standards about what we will and won't accept just at a, at a minimum level mm. and then over and above that we've then got these 2025 targets soon to be you know we're renewed yeah. because we'll we'll hopefully we'll achieve all of those and then we'll move on to the next and how set long of have you targets. been doing this how long you've been getting how long have you been involved in the world of sustainability um with next about seven years yeah um before that i was at sainsbury's um and tesco um, I've always had a small element of sustainability in my role because I've always been around fabric and textiles. Okay. So I'd say probably for the last 15 years, it's been up and coming. Mm. But this, the job that I have now, um, that I've had at Next for the last seven years, um, th this is the first time I've had a full sustainability job where yeah. it's all I focus on. It's always just been a small part of the job and it's just getting bigger and bigger. And we're sort of in the process now, I think, of making all of this business as usual. Yes. In the same way that we have with um, ethical, we call it code of practice at Next, yeah. but with the ethical side of things and making sure that we only use um, the, the best of factories, we and, but that's very embedded now in yeah. the business. It's just yeah. a normal process that all the buyers and designers and everybody, just they just do naturally. Yeah. Um, 
we're, we're getting to that point now with raw material switching. Um, so, but yes, there's, there's still, there's a lot further to go because whilst we've switched from, let's call it like a conventional cotton into a better cotton, which has less harmful effects, there's actually further we can go. We can actually, in the future, potentially get to cotton, which is, you know, positive for the environment and positive for nature. Oh, okay. That's going to be a stretch. Yeah. But that's, that's, you know, the goal. That, that's where we're heading. That's the goal. Yeah. And it's what, not an official goal yet, but that's no, where we're no, heading. No, that's yeah. where we're heading. And is that, how, why sustainability? Like, why choose that out of all the different things? Or, mm. you know, why you've done it for seven years? Why pick that? Oh, I mean, a few reasons. Yeah. One, I just find it really interesting to not really know exactly what the future holds. Um, oh, okay. I was a I was a fabric tech and a garment tech and with product and, and other product people will disagree with me, I'm sure. <laughs> but I, I sort of got to the point where it's like, okay, another factory, another day, another sample. Mm. And, you know, you do your best to make it the best quality. But there was always, it was always the additional bits around the product development process that I enjoyed more. So I went into fabric sourcing because then I could have more control over where we thought the trends were going. Oh, and sort I of see. influence that way. And I just find sustainability pretty much every season, there's something new that comes up that we need to investigate. And, you know, we might not have rules, we might not have an approach, and we need to work out what the approach should be for the business. So mm. I find that really rewarding. So it's almost like you're getting new challenges come along all the time yeah. that you want to then tackle and kind of take on then. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. 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 And so, I mean, don't get me wrong, sometimes it's exhausting. <laughs> Okay, uh, something right, else something else yeah. yeah something else and does that and do those like you said sustainability is constantly evolving and changing mm. so then do you kind of have to just kind of start again from scratch or bit or build upon what it's, you've kind it's of it's definitely got. more building, building. on what yeah. we've already done and it's making sure that we work with the product teams because a lot of the well everything i've been doing with sustainability I personally can't make the changes. You know, I need to work with the product teams, mm. the designers, the buyers, you know, the people who are making the decisions to choose to move from a conventional material to a better one. And and those buyers actually have got the power and the and the technologists, they've got the power to, you know, make massive changes. Yeah. Um so yeah, that that's the other part of it I find really I really enjoy yeah. working with the product teams. Yeah. So is there a lot of is there a lot of then you taking the time to work with the buyers and influence them like you've said, but also give them more of an education, I guess, on where to go? Because I guess yeah. they they will be focused so much on the making great quality products at the best price. Yeah. But still ethically as well. Yeah. But I guess that's that's another thing to add where you're kind of, am I right in saying you're kind of coming along going, oh, actually, I can support you with this. Is yes, that right? That's yeah. Ex yeah, that's yeah. exactly it. And I, I love that part of the Do job. You? Yeah. yeah, like helping educate people. In, yeah. And because I genuinely think people, most people really care and actually quite worried about yeah. all of this. It's a big, it's a, well, it's been around for God, mm. whoa for ages yeah like well, since like the 60s yeah and all the hippies they were telling us <laughs> even then weren't they yeah <laughs> yeah <laughs> but no no it is it is such a big thing and it's not that at next we don't do things because we were just talking before weren't we that we've got a huge csr report of all mm. the stuff that we've been doing for years that we publish on an annual basis that kind of highlights look this is where what we're doing and what we're we're doing as a brand really yeah um so it's not it's not something like oh we'll just get you on the podcast because it's brand new it's it's been there it's just oh, yeah. no yeah it's yeah. just everyone's been working really hard on yeah. it for, <laughs> well i think 2018 we set the 2025 yeah. target and we spent probably most of the summer just going around and talking to every single product team and just understanding how they could make a difference right um, so, you know, if there was one team that was very heavy on polyester, it's like, okay, well, then let's move into recycled polyester. Right. And if there's a team that was heavy on the viscose and man-made cellulose, it's like, okay, these are your alternatives. These are how, these, these are the things right. you can choose so to it's make not, a difference. So it's not kind of changing the way that the work as such. It's kind of giving a better alternative though, yeah. Yeah, to yeah. the product team. Yeah, it's just letting people have the options and mm. understanding what difference they can make and empowering people, you know, to make those decisions. So I'm really, I'm really glad that Next backed all of that. You know, mm. right back in 2018, the yeah. product director said, yeah, we can see this is coming. This is a good thing to do. Please go ahead and, you know, 
educate everyone, give us all the options, and now here we are, 2025, around the corner, and we're almost there. But as I say, still a long way to go. Yeah. And new things coming all the yeah. time. And goalposts and expectations will rise, won't they? So, like you say, we've hit some of the targets on timber and things. But then it's well, like, we will. Well, we will. <laughs> <laughs> but I guess it's how I bet, I bet we'll get to the point then where it's like, well, because I just know the nature of next, it'll be like, well, we can make that better, right? Exactly. Yeah, like, like someone will go, yeah, we've almost hit that target, but there's something more we can do. We, we're not, we're not a brand that's just going to go, yeah, that's yes, that, brilliant. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. We're, we're, right. we're great. We've hit that target. It'll be like, yeah. right, how can we go past that now? Exactly. Yeah. And as I said, we're already working on what that will look like but we will work with the product teams because what we need to do is choose things that are we've got to get the balance of being you know fully green let's say but also still commercial like you said great product yeah um you know on time yeah the right quality and all of these things built in so we work really hand Mm. in hand with the teams to work out what the targets what the policy should be so yeah it's it's um it's a he massive collaboration. It's a massive collaboration. And when you think about it, yeah. because it's not, because if you think of all the people in product, I don't know the exact number, but it's well over a thousand. Oh yeah. yeah easily. easily. And if you add on all the TP brands and, as yeah, well now. It's like huge. So, you know, to, for you, you and the team and everyone to be working with them is no small, <laughs> no small thing. That's for sure. Exactly. Um, and what, what are you most, what are you most excited for? In, or what, what are you most proud of that's kind of gone through over the past, seven or so years is there anything that springs to mind that you're like oh yeah that was that was a good moment yeah do you know there's so many um and it's not mine personally but yeah. um philippa from our team i'm gonna give her a shout hey. out we've we've um she's moved next from um we're we're a, we're a membership of um, the zero discharge of hazardous chemicals group wow that's which, a mouthful <laughs> yeah which sounds quite dry but what what that's about is every again every product we make has an impact so we can choose to use chemicals any old chemicals that we don't know anything about or we can use chemicals that don't that have a much lower impact on the environment and don't discharge so the zero is the you know zero discharging of anything hazardous into the environment um we and philip has got us to a gold standard on that so we're i think it's called leadership level so we're, nice. you know, we're leading the way. And again, that's something really quietly that we do in the background. Yeah. We talk about it in the CR report. It's out in the public domain. And it's, it's an awful lot of hard work, but it's showing leadership because then our factories understand that that's our commitment, that that's how we want them to operate. Oh, so it works. So it al- oh, right. So all of this then does kind it, of trickle down to the factories oh, as well. Yeah. I mean, it comes from the factories. Oh, it comes from. Yeah, I've not even explained that. <laughs> like, so the raw materials are right down at, you know, at farm level or extraction, if we're talking about polyester or trees, when we were talking yeah. about mammocellulosics. But then there's a whole supply chain in between where, you know, we're dyeing fabrics. We're, um, you know, we, we potentially can be producing quite a lot of waste using loads of water. So we're looking at all the levels in the supply chain and going, how can we reduce our impact? So the ZDHC is just one of those. We're also members of different organisations that are going to help us understand the impacts at the different factories. So it could be that we need to ask factories to switch to... It already happened in China, naturally, to switch from coal into gas. But then the next step is to move from gas into renewables. Yeah. So, you know, there's there's loads of impacts. Everything we make has an impact Mm. um and there's waste in the supply chain water in the supply chain so that's where we can have an influence because if we come along and all the other brands and retailers come along and ask those factories can you help clean up your act Mm. we can help you by continuing to you know do business with you whilst you do it but then that's great for them in their country as well yeah because it's not having an environmental impact Yeah. yeah it's a better way of life better quality still getting the same product everyone's a lot happier basically yeah, <laughs> yeah that's the yeah, yeah that's yeah. the aim it's like yeah. yeah it can be so holistic yeah yeah and 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 what's the what's the i always forget the term where it's called um it's like a cycle well, it's like a circle but it's kind of oh, yes yeah. well they call it circularity yeah what's this, that yeah so this is the idea that the traditional system we have mm. for product at the moment 
Um, and this is the globe over. This is yeah, 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 yeah. It's, I mean, it's a bit of a yeah. This yeah. is a bit of a pipe dream. Well, is it a pipe well, dream or not? No, 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 no. It's definitely starting. I'll yeah. explain it. And yeah. then, so it's the idea that w- at the moment we take things, we make them, and then at the end we just dispose of them. Right. And the idea of circularity—it's just a catch-all term, really. Yeah. But it means being really resource efficient all the way along that, and then when it comes to the end of the cycle, is it really waste or could it be reused? reused. And that can be that can be anywhere in the supply chain. So can we reuse the water that's used for the man-made cellulosic production? God, yeah. Well, we do. That happens for our, you know, for the things that for the fibres that we count towards our 2025. They do recapture the water and all the chemicals, and that's why we recognise them as better because uh, they're not then emitting chemicals yeah. and wasting water. Got you. Yeah. But then at the other end, at the product end, I mean, we've seen the rise of Vinted and eBay. Yeah. That again, that's part that's of the circular economy it, yeah. because it's saying that well, when it's at the end of its life for me, doesn't mm. mean it's at the end of its life. It can go on and have another life, and then ultimately, and the, and we're talking future. And this, I don't know, it's quite a pipe dream, but it's going to take, take quite a, a lot of collaboration. Yeah. It's going to take governments and industry and everyone working together. But the idea that we can then collect used textiles back again, and mosh them all back up and turn them back into new raw materials to make new things yeah because you see that with some some brands on some products don't you like over the world where it'll be like oh this train of souls formed from this or yeah it was this and now is this you see it in small doses exactly yeah Yeah. so i guess it's it's and that's how it starts yeah, yeah I mean, um, I'm going back probably 20 years now, but I don't know if you'd ne- ever noticed, but Nike have been putting 10% organic cotton in their products, even back in the 90s. And that's how it starts. That's quite how quite right. a lot of these things start, because actually if there's a, if there's a market for re, you know, um, collected waste and it goes back into your trainers, well, then you start small, but then you build that up. So... And that's why I say to get this to scale, we're going to need huge collaboration. Mm. But there's definitely pockets of this. So we did a trial in Bangladesh last year where um, the factories would gather up all their scraps from making the offcuts of the T-shirts. Imagine a T-shirt. It's got round bits yeah. cut out of it when, when you've got the fabric flat. Save all those mosh them all back up again, turn them back into fibre and turn them into yarn. And then they've been blending that and making it back into new yarns to go into new T-shirts. So you can have, it's like circles within circles within circles. Yeah, so yeah, it's not, I mean, I'm glad you've explained that because it's a term that I've heard more and more, probably over the last three or four years. And when Mm. it first came, I was like, ooh. And I just thought start to end and then back to the beginning. But actually, you've kind of got, circles along the way and one big circle overall as well yeah exactly yeah perfect yeah i'm yeah. glad you've explained that because sometimes <laughs> i was i always sit there thinking i'm like i think i get it but there's got to be more to it than just yeah. start here get to the end and go round again but that makes way more sense yeah you it's reuse doing lots along of the way. It, it resource efficiency yeah. would be a, a way to and explain also it must be for as well just clever business because like you say if you take the t-shirt mm. And before that would have just either been disregarded or whatever. How I'm not sure what would have mm-hmm. happened. But now you're reusing it to make more T-shirts. You get more out of your fabric. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. It's just good business. So you got you buy less fabric because you're using more fabric. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. That's that's ultimately. And and again, these things are small scale and they're fairly niche. But the more we can do with them, and because we're a big business and we can have a big influence if we can help those things get to scale. Mm. And that's really the power of when I'm, when I'm talking to the buyers, I'm like, that's the power of your decision making. Like, don't think that you can feel, I think there's a generation definitely that feels a lot of guilt about environment and, okay. and feels that, oh, you know, I can't do anything. But actually, if you're sitting there making decisions about what to source and who to buy from and which, you know, which factory to place the business with, you're absolutely making a difference. More difference than you could probably ever make if you recycled everything at home for your whole life. You know, make a better buying decision and you're, you, yeah, you're making a huge difference in the world because it sends ripples, doesn't it? Because then mm. those businesses hear about that and say, oh, next to buying that, I wonder if these other people would yeah. like to buy it. And so these business models go from being something niche to being something, you know, mm. scalable and realistic. Do you think that's really like part of Next DNA as well, though, where, mm. as well, where everything we do can start as such a small idea but just explode into something more. Yeah. So it kind of feels like because of the ethos and the culture of our company that actually 
that ties in with sustainability really well because we yeah. we will explore all these small things yeah. and then really go right come on and push it like yeah. it's such I love a, that about yeah. next do you yeah yeah, yeah. what what's the reason so in total, how long have you been at Next? Seven years? Seven years this time. Yeah. I'm another boomeranger. Uh, I know you've, uh, you've interviewed a few of them. Yeah. <laughs> oh, right. I was here straight from university. Oh, okay. And I think I was here for seven years the first time. Yeah. Um, and then I went off and did a stint at Tesco. And yeah. then I was at Sainsbury's for 10 years. Right. I'm giving away my age now. <laughs> and then I came back here and worked in home in the product teams uh, as a curtains tech. And I did bedding for a while. Um, so yeah, seven years this time, and you're going to ask me why I came back. Yeah, I am. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, I thought I was doing the interview. <laughs> oh, I mean, I suppose the main thing is what I realised is that every company, every company's got its challenges. Yeah. Like nobody's perfect, and I just fitted in here. <laughs> right. I think that's that was the main thing. I there was. Yeah, there was, there's opportunities here. Mm. Um, and I think because we're, definitely because we're financially sound, that gives us a bit more um, confidence to try those small things. And we can't do them in a big way, but in other companies it's like, yeah, that's a small thing, but you've got to, you know, do reams and reams of PowerPoints and make a business case. Whereas next to like, yeah, yeah, just try Give it. it. You know, it might be a couple of percent of your week. But give it a go because we never know where it will go. And that's, I think that, like you said, that's how we learn. And I didn't appreciate that until okay. I came back. And I was like, oh, yeah, okay, that's why I like it here. So that's the number one difference you'd see from mm -hmm. next to other businesses that you've been at then, that yeah. that ability to kind of take, not always risks, but to take stuff on, yeah, and just kind of, yeah, yeah give it a go, basically. Like, yeah, definitely. Yeah. I'm well, glad you came back. <laughs> I'm glad I did. <laughs> and it's that, and you're right. You're right to say there on the opportunities because even from you just talking there, mm. you saying, "Oh, I did this and I did that, and I, I worked in this area for a bit, mm. and then I worked on that." I don't think you get that in a lot of other places. I'm, I know people move around internally, and I get that, mm. but I know from my personal experience as well, the opportunities do arise, and if you see an opportunity and take it, you've got, like you say. We're in a privileged position where we've got the opportunity to influence and change a business, a market, you know, mm -hmm. uh, a range, you know, a brand, whatever it might be. Everyone's got that kind of influence. It, everyone's collectively yeah. making the brand. It's not just, you know, one person at the top or a group of people. It's like everyone's feeding oh, into it. Oh, 100%. Yeah, I definitely feel that. You know, yeah. um, we, we've got all the different layers of people in our team and we've got such a lovely team and there isn't you know everything doesn't always come from the top definitely not no um there's there's many things that you know somebody will notice and go well we could we do that better you're like yeah we definitely could because then we could communicate to the buyers more easily mm. so there's yeah definitely agree with that yeah and what what's kind of you've alluded to some of the targets is there anything you could kind of say of all oh, where where where's this or where do you think it's going to go where's sustainability going to go in general do you think like wow. yeah. yeah the um the the one thing i can cuz it i mean it's not necessarily yeah i can definitely talk about this yeah yeah so the because i'm talking about a whole industry rather than next specifically yeah yeah yeah, yeah. so as an industry um there is a definite focus on carbon and that's absolutely right because we can measure carbon it's one thing that we can almost do the same in the same way that we account for money in financial terms we can account for carbon in a similar way and there's still lots more to be done to account for it absolutely correctly in you know pounds and pence kind of way but actually the the broader the thing that's happening in the industry and you mentioned circularity is this much broadening out of all of these metrics um, and 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 those will be so rather than just carbon, we need to think about biodiversity and water, and nature and deforestation. So that's the one the one big direction we're going to go in is we're going to get a lot more legislation around things other than carbon. We're going to get legislation around well, we already have got legislation around deforestation. Um, I think as well, and this is just my personal yeah, opinion. Yeah. I think you know climate change actually affects the less developed and poorer countries more than it affects the West. So I think there's going to be a big move as well towards more like reparation and making recompense to the countries that are 
you know, if there's a drought or a flood, mm. it's rarely here that yeah, that's true. That people that's are true. affected. That is so very true. I think there's going to be a, um, a much more of a swing towards considering people as well in the sustainability right. okay. realm. Yeah, I guess because a lot of the time it is focused on the planet or nature or the materials we're using yeah. rather than the environments people live in yes. or operate in. Yes. Yeah. And that's that's what's going to broaden out, I think, oh, okay. in the next probably in the next 10 years. And I think we'll probably end up working much more closely with the ethical team um, because of the ethical team, rightly so, focus at, at the top level of our supply chain. So the tier one, we call them, the factories that make the product. But there are so many impacts all the way down that supply chain also on people because they can't be separated. I, I mean, I hear stories about um, challenges with deforestation and you can rarely solve a problem about deforestation without solving the people problem first. Okay. Because it will be the people who live in that region who are saying, well, I need to chop down that forest to put a farm because the farm will give me right. an income for my family, whereas the forest isn't giving me an income for my family. So you've got to sort out the social side before, yeah, or it, hand in hand yeah, with sorting out the Yeah, you can't just side. say, right, stop chopping the... Well, obviously, we we want to consider the planet, but saying stop chopping that tree down and then that whole community then goes, well, what do we live on? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. But at the same, it's kind of, yeah, like, as you've described, we've got to kind of tackle both. Yeah, yeah they all definitely together. go hand in hand. Yeah. And the way we do that here at Next is we tend to work with initiative certification standards who are experts in those areas. So, for example, we work with the Better Cotton Initiative. Well, they're experts in cotton growing and farming and they have a social element a nature element a soil health element they have elements within their standard and they have experts on the ground who are working out how to make that work for that particular community or that set of farmers Got you. so that's how we approach it because we can't be everywhere and doing no. everything so we have to partner with schemes that then we're not just working with on our own either. So the Better Cotton Initiative are a huge organisation and they work with all of our competitors. And I sometimes don't like to call them competitors because they're actually our peers. You know, they're yeah, our industry. Yeah, in, the, in this in this We're all in it yeah, together. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In this instance, we absolutely are. Yeah. yeah. And we can all make a bigger difference if we all go towards the same initiatives together mm. as well. So yeah, yeah we do a lot it, of that in our job like talking to our, you? Uh, yeah it's a uh, our peers yeah it's not it's i guess because if you're talking about like trends which is kind of like such a big thing for us in all aspects probably wouldn't be something where everyone's sharing what product ranges they're building yeah, on exactly but in the sustainability world it kind of makes more sense because yeah. if you if next start doing something like you said earlier i think the example was with like the organic cotton in night if they start doing it or if other people start seeing someone else is doing it let's all talk and get the benefit and also give the benefit to the planet and the people and everything mm -hmm. to make better products yeah it's more there's yeah more power and more influence yeah. together so if we use that power and influence for good then yeah and that that's what gets me out of bed every day <laughs> really <laughs> yeah. yeah yeah thinking that we can like jointly make that difference mm. and we're not just next on our own you know sort of trying to blaze the way it's like we are but we we're also running with we're running with the pack of other people who are all trying mm. to do the same you know we're all trying to ultimately have sustainable businesses that will be here in the long long term yeah rather than you know we could all make a quick book and, yeah and, you know go that, home yeah. again but, but what you know what yeah what about the, all the new trainees that are started now? What business are they going to have in 20 years? Yeah. We want to leave them a better business. Well, they'll probably still be here in 20 years. <laughs> <laughs> so is that, that, that's really interesting you said about that. That gets you out of bed. Is that, is that that drive that comes from within then to just make things better? Is that yeah. what it comes down to really yeah. ultimately? Yeah. Because yeah. actually you could feel quite a lot of guilt about yeah, you said product that. and yeah. you know just buying more and more stuff and dumping more and more stuff on people and then they've got to get rid of it and that creates waste but that you know we're all part of this together so actually it's for me it's much better to be within within that machine if you like yeah. and going okay how do we from within within this make a difference because you know the only way you can get away from it would be never buy anything new <laughs> grow your own vegetables and go and live on them well, you know, everything we do as humans has an impact. So yeah. actually you're better off being part of it and trying to work out how to make it better 
than just go, oh, it's all wrong, I'm going to go and live on a desert island somewhere. Yeah, because the, the world's got a lot smaller now as well, hasn't it? Let's face it, like yeah. you said, it's it's a global, as a species now, we're so global and globalisation is such a big thing and we're so... Mm. We're so connected across the world as well now, you yeah. know, like the, I can just think from people I've spoke to before, all the different places we have suppliers in and, you know, where we source all the fabrics yeah. on. It is literally, yeah. I remember someone saying like we get like uh, pine trees or something from like Brazil, which I never thought we did. But yeah, you yeah. know, it's... And we are all in it yeah, together. And we're all in it together. So I like how you're saying like, rather than shy away from it, let's mm. let's try and make a better solution or a better product or a better business, sustainable business. Yeah. 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 It's not, it's not an easy task, but I do genuinely think that we're, we're a business that can do that. Yeah. And legislation's going to come along, which will make us do it. Yeah. But actually if we can get ahead of that legislation and we're doing it because it's good for business rather than just because we're told to, yeah. that's a way better position to be in, yeah, isn't it? Yeah, and we're not about that. We're not about that. We want to do the right thing. So, yeah, I totally... I'm, I'm glad... It, it, and it, it's good that we are doing that. Mm. And it's good that we've got a team and people like yourself in place to do that. We've so. got, Yeah, we've got a great team. Oh, good. Shout out to them. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's a great place to uh, end, end the podcast anyway. Thank you so much for coming on. Um, really, really interesting. I'm sure we'll get loads of people wanting to know more about sustainability at Next, but thanks for coming on, Liz. Oh, thanks for having me.